So I'm going to face you guys really quickly. So for those who don't know me, my name is Christina Rodriguez. I am a licensed attorney. I live in Houston, Texas. I'm licensed in Texas. Um, prior to joining Lexis, I practiced family and probate primarily. Um, and now I'm a solutions consultant with Lexis and I train our state and local government accounts. So I do CLEs and training sessions that can double as CLEs. Um, so today I have a kind of just a Lexis refresher and enhancements on what's new with Lexis. Also, it's going to kind of revolve around um, appellate research just to try to follow in with what the justices were talking about um, and just show you some ways to try to narrow your research, make it a little bit easier, more efficient for you in the setting of appellate research. So hopefully I can keep you guys entertained for the time that we have. Um, please feel free to stop me if you'd like to come up to the mic. They suggested you do that so everybody can hear. Otherwise, um, I'm just going to get started, okay? Cool. So um, I'm not sure how many of you guys use Lexis uh, primarily, um, but we did make a change to our homepage. Initially, our homepage had workspace pods on them, and Lexis is really good about doing market research and um, customer feedback, and so they realized that not a lot of people were using those workspace pods. I don't know if you guys remember. It had, like, history, folders, um, custom pages, alerts, stuff like that. They wanted to go ahead and streamline the home page to make it a little less busy and um, a little bit more intuitive. So here you have this viewer options button. If you click that, all it's going to do is remove your practice areas and your favorites. I almost never have it like that. I like it expanded like that. Um, beneath that, you'll see your explore content, which is where you can filter out to your state specific materials, as well as get to your secondary sources and topics and things like that. So before we jump into that, I just want to point out a couple settings uh, that you can do to try to make your research a little bit more efficient. So if we hit the more button and go into settings, it's going to jump you off into your general settings page. This is where you can um, put whatever your starting product is. Let's say if you had more than Lexis Advance, if you had like public record or something like that, you can make that be your start page. I, of course, have the research page as my start page. Um, additionally, I like my results to be at 50. You do, you can, you know, make that smaller at 10 or 25, but I just like to have a robust amount of results on the first page. Um, also, I think huge uh, settings to, fit, to point out are these two settings right here in the center of our page is displaying jurisdiction and location filters, as well as uh, court filters. Here I have mine set to Texas, that's, that's the jurisdiction I'm licensed in, but for you guys, you click edit and you could put Montana in there, and I'm going to show you how that makes it much more useful when you're doing your research when you're trying to filter down later on. Um, so I would hit edit on both of these items and put Montana there so that way you can eliminate the need to scroll through all those state filters once you get to your results list. Um, these other uh, settings are kind of more user specific, your font type, the font size, things like that. Um, also your default settings, I have mine defaulting to co cases and then codes. You guys can set that to statutes and secondary materials if you like. Um, another big setting that I like to tell users about is our research map. Go ahead and set that to 30 days. I'm going to show you why later on in our presentation, why that's so helpful. But it can be narrowed down to 7 or 15, but I just prefer to keep that research map um, as long as I can. So those are kind of just the general settings that I wanted to point out. Now if we scroll over to our Lexis Advanced Research Settings, this is where you would be able to change your homepage from just your normal Lexis Advanced Research homepage to like a Montana specific page. So you could click here and you could make your homepage be the actual uh, Montana page. Um, and I'll show you how to be able to do that from the actual start page as well when you get to your statutes. Um, another big setting that I like to put on here are these two uh, buttons. Make sure these are clicked, the include legal phrase equivalents and recognize and use legal entities when performing a search. What this is going to do is if you were searching for, say, you know, DUI cases, you're also going to get DWI cases or um, it knows when to separate uh, search terms or to use legal phrases of art. So like um, exigent circumstances isn't going to be separated as two different search terms. It knows intuitively to make that one search term. So I think that that is a big setting that a lot of people don't realize. Um, I like to display cases first. Again, you can put statutes or secondary materials, admin uh, materials if you like. And um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about initially with settings. I didn't change anything, so I'm just going to close settings without saving. But for you guys, if you were to change, you would just click save. So um, 
Here I want to discuss your state materials. So like I said, if we go down here to um, Montana, we can just click our Montana specific materials straight from the Explore content page. This is going to show you all, all Montana materials that you can search across. So if you're starting your search from the original homepage, you would be searching across all content on Lexis Advance. If you're gonna do it from here, you're going to immediately start your search in all of your Montana content first. So this is how you can make Montana your homepage, uh, your research start page, if you click this little home button, or you can click the favorite button to, uh, to make that a uh, favorite for you to be able to access straight from the homepage. Also, if I wanted to get into Montana statutes and codes, I'm going to go into our uh, Montana codes annotated. If you click into here, you're going to be able to see a table of contents view of all of the codes in Montana. You have it broken down here by table of contents. Everything is expandable. Um, this is the type of page that I, I would favorite so that whenever you get to your favorites, it's going to be right there at the beginning. You can also set alerts for the codes uh, to, dis to discover whenever they've been updated. I know you guys are in a legislative session, I think, to where you have statutes that have been updated and are going to be in effect on, uh, as of 10-1. So um, I think that that is really helpful to have that um, at the outset of your research to get into those codes right then and there. Also, what I wanted to point out our, um, are your archived codes that moved recently from the, we used to have a browse button here, but they removed that and wanted to streamline it into explore content. So if you're ever interested in looking at archived code versions, you will get to that from our explore content. You go into content type, you can click into archive codes that way. So what I wanna talk about now are um, our uh, topics. Um, excuse me, first I'm gonna talk about sources. So let's, let's talk about your secondary sources. Um, to get a list of all of your secondary sources, depending on how the plan is set up, you will either have in-plan sources or view all sources. It doesn't really matter which button you have because once you click it, you will see either all of the in-plan sources that you have or every source that we have across Lexis Advance. The way you'll be able to determine which sources you can actually access are going to be the ones that you can click on. So anything that's grayed out, um, you won't have access to, but the way our government accounts are set up, it's great because you can't go out of plan at all, but um, you can filter out the sources to get straight to your Montana specific sources, and there are 64 of those. Um, that you can go through and click through and look at and add as favorites. You can also add your sources as search filters to where when you are starting your search, those uh, secondary sources will also be pinged with those search, uh, search terms that you put in. So I think that that is a, a cool way to access your source material. So another thing I wanna point out from our homepage are our topics. Our topics are um, derived from our headnotes, which as you know, are not editorialized. All of our headnotes come straight from the court's opinion, so we don't have any attorney editors kind of putting their own little glean on what the court says in particular, court, uh, in particular cases. So um, here, if you were to see, we have a robust amount of topics based off those headnotes, and uh, for today's uh, presentation, I want to look at uh, crim law and procedure. So this would be something that you would do to jump off your research if you didn't really have search terms in mind, but you know you're looking for a particular issue. Um, this is a way to get you some search results without typing in any search terms. So here we're in the crim law and procedure uh, topic, and you'll see it has tons of other sub, uh, secondary topics beneath that. So I want to look at um, uh, appeals since we're talking about appellate work. I wanna look at reversible error, so I'm gonna expand that. And then exactly on point with what I was thinking was jury instructions. So if we had a uh, issue with jury instructions on appeal, I'm going to click into that, and here you have, it puts you, here's your selected category first, so you see it shows cases first, but you can toggle between uh, statutes and secondary materials as well. But here you have 10,000 cases for jury instructions on the topic underneath your appeals in criminal law and procedure. Now here's where those uh, filters come into play like on those settings that I pointed out earlier. You see my preferred court is Texas right at the top. 
So it gets kind of monotonous going down to get to Texas each time. So that's how that setting is going to streamline the amount of time you spend filtering out your material, right? So here we're gonna click Montana. I also want to get some Ninth Circuit cases in here. And here, if um, I wanted to add a search term to further narrow it down, let's say we're dealing with a jury charge regarding self-defense, I would type that in to further narrow, and now we're at 47 cases from 10,000. So that's kind of how you would jumpstart your research in this setting um, would be from topics, and you haven't put in one single search term, and here you have um, a multitude of cases to go through to try to narrow down what you're looking for. Um, and that's just straight from our topics. Does anybody have any questions about that? Sure. Okay. So from the home page in topics right here beneath explore content, I went to criminal law and procedure. And then I went to appeals. And then I went to reversible error. And then I went to jury instructions. Of course, you can go to charging instrument. I mean, you know, just whatever is on point. But for today's example, we're going to be dealing with uh, jury instructions. And then so from here, that's where I filtered to Ninth Circuit, Montana. And then I, I put in a keyword of self-defense. And that's how we got those 47 cases. So um, how many folks in the room use terms and connectors, Boolean search terms? Neat, that's actually a lot better than a lot of people. You guys are wizards. Um, for those of us that aren't as good with terms and connectors like myself, if you go to the advanced search, sorry, I clicked that probably really fast. If you're on the home page, you can see our advanced search button right here beneath practice areas. If you click into that, this is actually going to be super helpful for those of us who don't know how to use terms and connectors or aren't as familiar with them. So here um, you'll see kind of like a cheat sheet for your terms and connectors here on the right hand side of your screen. But you can also have a more in depth terms and connectors um, a pamphlet right here from clicking this link on the beneath that little cheat sheet. That's going to give you a little bit more information on how to use those. But let's say um, I want to use terms and connectors, but I don't know how. So I'm going to put in my search um, jury instructions, and then I want to put reversible error. So on these, you're just going to click add after you type them in. And let's say I want to do self. After you click add, you'll see that comes up with your terms and connector search by itself without you having to know kind of the algorithm and all of the computer stuff that goes along when you're doing these Boolean search terms. So I think that that's a cool way to use our advanced search feature without with taking all the guesswork out of it. Also, another feature that I want to point out from our advanced search would be segment searching. So here, if you see, we have everything, search everything, right? What Lexis has done is they have created segments across every um, document that we have on our platform. So let's just take cases, for instance. It has broken cases down into segments that are searchable for you to be able to find what you're looking for faster. Now, if you're confused by what that means, Lexis gives you an example over here to the right side. So if I click that, you'll see each segment pointed out in the case, or if this was a statute, you'd see the statute here, and it tells you exactly what the segment is for you to be able to search that segment. So I've had folks come in here and search for every opinion written by a particular judge. And they found every opinion written by that judge by doing a segment search here on our advanced search feature. You can search by attorneys. You can search by concurrences, dissents, um, overview, even head notes. So that's another cool uh, way to try to find what you're looking for faster. And that was through our advanced search feature. So if we go back to our home page, I just want to point out that our search bar is really intuitive. So if I type into it, if I have a question that I wanted to ask, we have something called Lexis Answers. So if I wanted to know what's the standard of review for an issue sorry, of law. 
So let's say we're starting off our research, we want to know what our standard of review are for a pure issue of law. It's going to intuitively know to search that. I didn't click the search button, I just typed in the question. And here you will be jumped to a results page that shows you um, three answers. The first answer is from the 10th Circuit. The next answer is going to be a Court of Appeals Federal Circuit case. And then you'll come and this is our Ninth Circuit example here. A big feature about this that I want to point out is, is this useful? If you find something that's not useful, just click no and it will not appear in your results again. But that's just another way of trying to get an answer to a question that you may not have known right off the bat um, that it's uh, reviewed on a de novo basis. You can also ask certain things like what are the elements of due process? What is the um, burden of proof for, you know, so you can try to type in certain things and Lexis is, intuit is trying to build up this intuitiveness with our search bar to be able to get you the results that you want. So let's start our search. We're going to go back to the search page and I'm not going to do a terms and connector search. I'm just going to type in my search term. So I'm going to put jury instructions, reversible error, and then I'm going to do self-defense. And I'm just going to search across all categories, but you can narrow it down on the front end by putting in Montana as your jurisdiction, or if you only wanted federal content, you'd be able to pre-filter pre, pre that. So here you'll see we have our uh, search results, and of course 10,000 cases, nobody's going to look at that many cases. But what I want to point out here from the results page are our search term maps. Um, have you guys seen these? search term maps so you kind of know how they work where they, they you can click through the case straight from the results page and you can kind of get a snapshot of where your search terms are throughout the case and if this case is uh, relevant to you. Where you see the little stars are where your highest population of terms are appearing. Um, you'll also have your shepherd's cards over to the right to be able to quickly tell you what your citing decisions are, if this is still good law, um, and how it's been cited to in the past. So. Um, but here, from here, I would like to filter our results to try to get us to some more um, uh, specific content to Montana. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar, I'm going to add um, the Ninth Circuit. I also want to get Supreme Court cases. And I'm going to click Montana as well because I want to get the cases that are specific at the state level. So once we do that, we're going to filter our results. It kind of cuts our results down to half once the, the page loads. Um, so you see we have 4,800 cases. That's still quite a bit to try to filter down to when you're researching um, at this level. Um, but what I want to show is Ravelview. How many in the room use our Ravelview? Awesome. You guys are going to love this. So here is just your normal graphical view. Ravel view kind of looks like a little molecule over to the far right side. If you click this, what this does is it's going to pull your, your first 75 cases and it's going to put them on this chart for you. Now what this chart is doing is it has combined seasonality and relevancy all in one graphical chart. So what that means is the size of the bubble is going to relate to its seminality. So the larger the bubble, the more citing decisions you have. So we can see at the Supreme Court level, these are two biggies. You also have some circuit level, district level, and then here you have your bubbles at the state level. Now, that's seminality. Now, as far as relevancy, oh, how many citing decisions you have. So how, how seminal the case is. So depend, you know, like if you have a thousand citing decisions to it, that's a big case that a lot of cases are. Yeah, sorry. It might be because I'm Tex from Texas. I'm saying it funny, guys. I'm sorry. Um, so it's going to take uh, your seminal cases and put them with the large bubbles. Now, where your bubbles appear is going to be important within each jurisdictional level. So relevancy is going to be based on the vertical position of your bubble. So the higher your bubble is within the jurisdictional uh, chart, the more relevant that case is based on your search terms. So these bubbles here at the circuit level are super relevant based off of our search terms because of how high they are on the chart. And the lines that connect these bubbles are your citing decisions. That's your citing relationships. So here you have a legend that you can hover over and it's going to tell you exactly what Ravel is showing you. So here size is the time cited, the connection, the line is the citing relationship, and then the vertical position is the relevance. 
so um, here you would be able to see your big cases. So if you just click on the bubble, it's going to show that case over to the right-hand side. It's going to give you a snapshot of that case for you to be able to see. And you see that this particular case is our 58th case. So how long would it have taken to get to that particular case to see? Now, obviously, there is some negative treatment here. You can click into here to see what's happened, why it was negatively treated, see the shepherd's report to see if it affects your jurisdiction. Um, and yes. Why is it showing that it's negatively treated if it's not affecting your jurisdiction? Say that one more time. Oh, because this Ravel takes your top 75 cases and puts them on this graph for you. So this case was the 58th case in your results list. And it's putting it on the graph to show you how seminal it is and um, if it's relevant to your search term. So you just got to that case? Well, I got to that particular case by, by clicking the bubble. Okay. And then to release it, all you have to do is click in the white space of the, of the chart. Right. Yes, exactly. So here, um, so then again, the higher the position in the jurisdictional chart, the more relevant it is, again, based off your search terms. So here I want to go at the state level. This is the biggest, the biggest bubble uh, at the state level. It's this Archambault case. So if I click on that, that's the 65th case, but this is out of you guys' Supreme Court. So that would be a case that we want to look at in re as it relates to our search terms, which were jury instructions, reversible error, and self-defense. So, is the, is mm -hmm. the uh, size of the number going to be increased when it's highlighted in red? Because you were saying it's not negative when it's highlighted in red, so it's going to be shorter. Why is the number of highlights in one area going down when the other one is highlighted? So the size of the bubble are citing decisions, but the vertical position are relevancy. So I think you had it flipped, or did I hear your question no. wrong? Okay, so the reason you just said the size of the bubble mm -hmm. is vertical, so it's taking the Archambault case and putting it down in red. That's the only place it's going to take it, is when it's highlighted. Yes, okay. yes. And if you just filtered to Montana only, you would just have one chart that had okay. your state, yeah, okay. that have your state cases. So I'm going to go into this uh, State v. Archambault case. It's a, it's a Supreme Court case in Montana. I'm going to want to read it and look at it and see if it's going to fit in with what I'm wanting. So here um, you'll see your navigational pane. It flows with you as you go through the document. It's going to have our normal delivery features here, your print, download, email. Um, you can save this to a folder. I recommend folders, guys. Um, you know, your history is only good for 90 days. So if you ever have things that you think you're going to go back to, go ahead and save stuff to folders. You are kind of unlimited with the amount of folders. Um, and here you would get your top five most recently used folders, or you'd be able to choose a folder and create it from this screen here, where you would click create new folder, you'd type it in, click save, and then you would save your document into there. So on this dropdown, this dropdown is only going to show your most recently used five folders. To actually get into a folder that's beyond your most recently used, you would have to click uh, choose. And then you could scroll through here and get to the folder that you want to put it in. Um, also, I want to point out your uh, highlighting and annotating. You All you have to do is select it. Once you release, you'll get this dialog box that comes up um, regarding annotating and highlighting. You can also add that particular highlight to a folder, add it to a search. Um, also want to point out that your annotations and highlights will stay with your case. Um, you can also print your case with your highlights and annotations as well. Um, that is a setting in your print features that you can do. So that's how you would highlight and annotate. I believe the highlighting stays when you save it to a folder. Um, but that's a great question. I'll double check on that to see if it does come up when you're just searching. Um, so um, what 
I wanted to talk about also are our head notes. Here is where you would go to your head notes in the case. Um, you could also shepherdize or narrow by that head note to get additional case cases that point to that particular head note. Um, you could also do more like this head note, which is going to pull in additional head notes that are similar to this one. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out to the right hand side beneath our shepherd's uh, grid or shepherd's uh, report is about this document. If you expand about this document, you're going to get the reporter image um, as well as the source information. You're going to be able to find references to this particular case where you'll get uh, secondary sources, um, treatises, maybe some um, law review articles that point to this case. You can also get the related court material. So there are two briefs that were filed in this particular case that you could read in addition to the case that are here right um, in this about this document. What I want to point out are our topic summaries. So here, topic summaries can be accessed here through about this document or they look like these little orange pieces of papers within the uh, head notes. So we know we have a self-defense topic summary. So I'm just going to click into that one from this orange uh, piece of paper. And what this is going to do is going to give you an overview of self-defense. Um, it defaults to the federal rule. So it gives you the federal definition, seminal cases, elements, statutes and rules, secondary sources, your burden of proof, and your applicable standard of review. Um, if you have uh, a, the, in the other jurisdictions box, if there are some uh, jurisdictions that go against federal or have different rules, you can click in here to find uh, if your jurisdiction is there. But this is kind of like a good uh, way to give yourself a reminder of what this actually is, the definition and seminal cases that go along with that. So if we go back into our case, Another uh, cool feature that I wanted to point out are our uh, legal issue trail. So let's say you have a particular part of the case that's nuanced. Um, you want to find cases that point to that particular sentence or statement in the case, but you don't know how to get there. You have to maybe formulate your a new search, create some terms, try to maybe tie in the case some kind of way. You would just spend a lot of time trying to figure out the search logic to get to those additional cases. Well, with Legal Issue Trail, all you have to do is go to the right and about this document, click Activate Passages. Once you do that, you're going to have purple hash marks around the um, different pieces of the case that have an, a legal issue trail. So um, let's say I want to look at paragraph 25, where it says, as we have held district courts are accorded broad discretion in formulating jury instructions. So all you have here is this one case that this case cites to, and then that's about it. You don't really know. You'd have to formulate your search to try to find other cases that would point to this. Once you activate Legal Issue Trail, all you have to do is click in the white space. What that's going to do is that's going to hop you into your Legal Issue Trail page. Now you'll see at the top it's going to say Legal Issue Trail. It is going to have your case that you're in, and it's also going to have your selected passage. Just in case you clicked into the wrong one, this is a good self-check to make sure you clicked into the passage that you wanted to see more about. So you'll see here we have 11 citations. The first citation is always going to be your case, what your case said. So here is that State v. Hall case that we have up here in the actual um, selected passage. But beneath that, you have 10 additional cases that cited to that particular nuanced portion of your case without you having to create a new search, without you having to figure out how you were going to find other cases that talk about that part of your case that's really relevant to what you're looking for. That's 10 cases right there that can narrow what you're hunting for just from using our uh, legal issue trail. Have you guys used that before? Cool. So um, if you go back into the case, if you want to deactivate legal issue trail, all you're going to do is go back into about this document and deactivate passages and they will go away to where you don't just have it sitting to where you're clicking around and doing a bunch of stuff. So also to point out our shepherds, uh, so if we're going to click to shepherdize this document, I wanted to show you guys our grid view just in case you haven't seen it. Um, so here's going to be your normal shepherds report. It defaults to your citing decisions, but you're also going to be able to see your appellate history and um, other citing sources. This is where you're going to get to those uh, law reviews, treatises, and other things that talk about your case. Um, but so here's the normal view, but once you scroll over to the right, you'll see your grid view. And what this does is it's going to show you the analysis by court, by date. 
So the first thing you're going to see is how Montana has treated this particular case. It's been cited 14 times and given neutral um, uh, citations and then positive uh, treatment as well. And then you can go here and see that by date. So you can see what was done all the way up to 2019. So it's been cited once this year. And if there were any warning or question or cautionary treatment, you'd be able to see that from this graph and that's also clickable. All of these are clickable for you to go in and see what the treatment was and how. So another thing to point out is that all of our cases have tables of authorities, which I think are really important. So each case you can click into their shepherd's report and you can get the table of authorities that were used in that particular case. This case had uh, 13. Um, so that would be able, that would be how you would see those. Another thing to point out is what if we were wanting to track this particular case to see if any um, treatment in the future, any negative or uh, neutral treatment, whichever, you would do that through this alert button here through the uh, Shepherd's Reports. A lot of people think that uh, tracking a case is going to be just from the face of the case. You have to go into our Shepherd's Report in order to track the case because you're trying to track additional treatment to this case. So in your alert box, you'll see it gives you the title. You can put a little description in here. Um, and then obviously, if you work with clients, you could, you could do clients. But in the monitor section, here's where you'll have some, some wiggle room. You can either have it for any change. You can either have it for a new negative analysis. Or if you click this custom settings, this is going to get you a bunch of options that you can check off for this particular case. So you can ask uh, to be alerted for negative treatment, positive treatment, or just neutral treatment or warning. Um, you can do a change in the citing reference signal, but you can also monitor the, each particular head note that's discussed in your case for different treatment there as well. And then once you click over to delivery, you would be able to um, change what your frequency is. You can do our alerts automatically are for two years, um, but you can change that by clicking the calendar. If you wanted your uh, alert to be run weekly, you can put a particular day you'd want the alert to be run on. In your delivery type, you would put your email, or if you just wanted to have that alert show up to you online only, that would show up to you when you were actually in the platform. You can add recipients, and then here's the thing. When I want an email notification on a case, I, I don't want a notification every time the Shepherd alert is run, right? I want a notification only when a change occurs. So this is the thing that I like to check instead of every time I just want to get an alert when a change occurs. And then the share tab, you'll be able to share this with other individuals who have Lexis Advanced accounts and you can put notes in here for them to review as well. So that would be how you would create a case alert to track that case for any new uh, treatment. Does anybody have any questions? So now I want to talk about your statutes and how you would go about um, finding um, a statute that would be on point with what you're looking for. So if we go back into our Montana specific um, information, if I go back into your codes, what we're going to see is again that table of contents view that we saw earlier. So here I want to search across all of your Montana codes and I'm just going to type in preserve error. So here you see we're searching across all of your um, Montana codes and then the first statute that comes up is this rule 51 instructions to the jury objections and preserving a claim of error right there at the top of your results list. Um, if we click into that, you'll be able to see a table of contents to the left hand side where you can kind of get context on where this is appearing in the code. Um, and you can also toggle between these. These are all clickable. You can go backwards and forwards on those. If you collapse that back over to the uh, right hand side, you'll see your shepherd. So you can shepherdize this document to see if there have any been, if there have been any citations to this particular rule. And then you'd have your about this document where you'd get source information and references. And then this is also how you'd be able to see those archived code versions um, in this particular screen here. Um, so uh, that's how you would get to the statute. I wanted to show the federal statute so you could see kind of a more uh, robust uh, 
about this doc and head notes that we have. So I'm going to look up the federal rules. And so you can see that you can type in without using any sort of um, punctuation. And it should just start coming up with what you're looking for. So I'm gonna look for rule 51. And then click enter. And then once you get to your federal rule, you can see kind of uh, the similar, um, but what I wanted to do was shepherdize this federal rule so you could see the citing decisions to this particular rule. And then you'd see you'd have 3,000 sites here, 22 sites on different subsections um, to where you could look at particular subsections that are important to you and get those sites to that particular rule. You could do the same in Montana, but that particular rule did not have any uh, sites to it yet. So that's how you would do that. Um, by shepherdizing the, the rule. And then again, your archive code versions are there. So really quickly, when we're back on the homepage, I just wanna show you guys how to set a uh, alert just by using your search terms. Um, I wanna do, I'm just gonna type in jury instructions. And let's say I wanted to do a news alert for that particular uh, phrase. So this is where you would toggle between statutes, cases, briefs, pleadings, motions, I wanna do news. And then I also want to filter that down to Montana because I only want Montana news. Um, and so here we'll go down to Montana. And so there's 103 news articles that were, were discussed jury instructions, but here if you would click your alert, you would see that in your monitor section, you have news Montana news there for your alert right there. And then you could also click additional things that you'd want to set an alert for with uh, respect to jury instructions. So that's what I had for our research. Really quickly, I do wanna point out your history. So your history, you can view all history or if you just toggle it from the front of the homepage, you'll have your most recent five searches there. If you go into view all history, what you're going to see are, um, it's filterable, totally searchable. You'll have your last 90 days of history. So you can look through the dates. You'll also have the type of documents that you uh, viewed. Um, and then if you were dealing with clients, you'd be able to sort it through there. You can put search terms here and um, to really try to get into that. But our research history map, over here, you can get it by clicking history and clicking research map there, or you can just click to the right-hand side of lists. What your research map is going to do is for those days that you are knee-deep in research and you go to lunch or you go home for the day or you put that issue down and come back to it next week and you try to remember, how did I get to that particular issue? How did I get to that particular case? Well, that's why I put that 30-day setting on research maps because this is going to be a breadcrumb trail of how you got to your results on a particular day in the last 30 days. So here you can see where we've done our research. So here I put in our search terms, this get, got us to over 100,000 cases. And then we narrowed it down by the Ninth Circuit, Supreme Court in Montana. And then once you click this, it'll give you this dialog box that will allow you to rerun that search. You can select this search and compare it up against other search results. You'll be able to save this to a folder or you can create an alert. So that is going to be super helpful and that's why um, I wanted to expand the amount of time that that uh, has to track so that you would be able to come back to it later and rerun that search if necessary or really just see how you got there, what you put in, what terms work, what doesn't. Does anybody have any questions about our research history map? And then while, when we wrap up, I would like to show our homepage again so you can see our customer support. It's moved to the bottom of the page right here. So here we um, really pride ourselves on customer support. We have on-demand trainings here. These are going to be videos and how-tos of quick reminders of how to do things when we forget. You also have this live chat support button feature that's going to really be helpful to just live chat with someone to help you. Um, but really our phone support, we have attorney um, 
attorney reviewers in there that can help you with search terms, logic, narrowing, um, all types of things that they're dedicated there to research to help you find the results that you want faster, easier, um, that are going to be more relevant to you. So those are all things that I think you guys should uh, take advantage of. And um, that's kind of what I had that I wanted to show you today. Of course, I'm open to more questions for anything that you have. That if they're specialized or one-on-one -on -one questions, I'm happy to open the floor to that. So thank you for your time. Are you talking about when you're copying it to get the actual site to put in like your Okay, let me click into our case and see. Let me see if I can recreate what you're talking about. Yeah, I just want to get to it. So just anywhere you were able to do that? Like yeah. if you were. Because I know when you do the copy, you can, but that's probably not what you're talking about. Um, I, I've not seen it to where you can hover like that. Uh, were you, like you're talking about like Nexus, like when it was on the web website platform yeah. instead? Yeah, it might, that might have been something that just went away. I, that, that would be helpful, but I don't know how to get that to show up again. I, I don't think on Lexis Advanced there is a way for that to happen besides just copying it and getting it that way. I know that's kind of tedious to have to do it that way. Like you would have your cursor like just like the way I have mine and it would actually show the pin, pin site right there. Oh, that's kind of annoying that that doesn't happen. Hmm. Yeah, um, another thing guys, I know that this seems kind of canned, but our feedback button is really huge. Like I would say if everybody in the room puts that up on feedback as far as where the hovering pin site go, Lexus really does look at those feedback requests and so that could be something that you put in there. That's that's a big thing. So, anyone else? Um, so that's a setting that you would have to go through, but I think it would affect how you see search term maps going forward too. Like you'd have to unclick it. Because um, right now what I'm doing is I'm clicking it and I'm going to run it. Mm -hmm. Then I end up copying it and putting it somewhere else. So you're talking about when you're looking at a case right now on the screen, you just don't, you don't want to see this anymore. Right. Or are you talking about when you print it? Oh, and you're saying that I think if you toggle this multicolor button off, it should take all the colors away, all the different colors away, and it'll put all of them in one color. Oh, and then you don't want to see them at all. I wonder if you – that's a great – I've never had anyone <laughs> – that's, that is a equally annoying if you have a bunch of color in here and you don't want to see that. Let me see. Yeah, that's like right, right. You got like a ton. Mm-hmm. 
No, this is just going to show you where your terms are, and you can, it's just like a count, almost similar to like a word count. I'm trying to. So this is just going to be able to toggle you through the case um, at different portions of the case. I'm trying to see if it'll let, I don't know if my internet is working fine. To see if this uh, quick, because quick usually condenses the case down for you. I'm trying to see if we click that, if it'll take away the highlights. I don't think it does though. Yeah, like download that, yeah, download the case without it. I'm trying to see what. Yeah, it's just. Like, uh, like you flip, like you flip forward, like you do that. Mm-hmm. Like you flip forward, back, you know, like you flip forward, back, you know, like you flip forward. So here you would do it. Mm. That's a great question, though. I will follow up on that to see how you can do it um, easier without having to go through your your settings. Oh, sure. So the question was how to remove the highlights once you found a case that's relevant to what you're looking for. And the workaround is to just re-put in the site for the case and get the case fresh without any uh, search terms highlighted. Um, I could show a way to do it through settings, but I don't think that that's going to be helpful when it comes to when you want to re regain the multicolor. So I'm going to have to follow up on that to see if there's an easier way to turn off the highlighting once you've already reached your case um, to eliminate the highlighting of the search term. Yeah, like if you go to the case from the Shepherds report. Mm hmm That's fantastic. <laughs> Hold on. Because that, let me see what that does. So, like, if you click your case from the Shepherd's Report. Yeah, I don't know why that got. Of course, there would show me an error when you're. That, I don't know. I don't know if you were to click into it from the Shepherd's Report, if it would go back to the case without the search terms. I'm not sure simply because it's still up here, too. So, I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes sense. Any other questions, guys, while we're here? Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a good afternoon.